y'all can you hear me yeah. awesome thank you so much for being here thanks to creative mornings to the to woodruff um has anybody seen a tiny door before yes <laughs> awesome so um i'll give you a little background on myself and then on the project i don't know if you can read this it says tiny me before the pink hair it says i like to draw i am an artist and i really really like to draw my spelling is only marginally better now. Um, so from a young age, I just, I knew that art piqued my curiosity, that it was something that I wanted to spend as much time as I could doing. 80s kids? Um, so I had this dollhouse, and it's a metal dollhouse, it's not, it's no frills, but it was the first thing that really made me profoundly curious. I wasn't interested in the drama of the dolls. In fact, I got rid of all my dolls. I got rid of all my furniture. I gave it to my friends. I had some modeling clay in all the primary colors and in black and white, and I made all the furniture myself. So I wasn't curious about the drama of who's mad at who in the house. I was curious in how you make a four-post bed. Like, I needed to know. I used to make little slabs and stick them together. It's hard to make posts out of clay. Um, so. That was the first time that art really piqued my interest and made me want to recreate the world around me in miniature. So tons has changed. Um, <laughs> after high school, I tried college. I hated it. So I joined a punk rock band, <laughs> like you do, right? Um, so I spent four years in a band touring the country. It really exposed me to art Around, around North America. And I got to understand community and the community that comes together around music, the community that comes together around art. And that was something that I knew I wanted to do when I was done with the band. So when that wrapped up, oh, so I got to see the country from the window of a tour bus. And I feel like you should know that it also involved pushing the tour bus. <laughs> On rare occasion, it's not, it's not all frills. Um, so when I was in art school, I started making sculptural cakes. The cool thing about sculptural cakes, so this was for a Shakespeare class, is that it, it still has that element of the unexpected. You're trying to recreate the world around you in an unexpected way, which is kind of like Tiny Doors, right? But I liked that it was interactive. I liked that you could eat it. <laughs> it's something that you've got this art right in front of you, and people are literally going to interact with it. And that was so fascinating to me. So I moved to Atlanta in 2013 after I graduated from art school. And I live in the Cabbage Town, Reynolds Town area. So the Krog Tunnel, right? I'd never seen anything like it. I'm from Ann Arbor, Michigan. We all do this. Um, and in Ann Arbor, the closest thing we have to the Krog Tunnel is a rock that the sororities and fraternities paint for homecoming. Like, that's it. I'd never seen something that had this conversation that was ongoing. I've, I've seen people from 5 to 75 painting at the Krog Tunnel. And so this live conversation was just mind-blowing. I was like, what do you mean right in my neighborhood artists are just talking to each other visually all the time? I need, I need a piece of that. i got to join in. Um, so I thought about it, and I thought about how I would want to have a voice in this Atlanta community. How do I want to join this conversation? I wasn't trying to start a movement. I wasn't trying to do anything other than just join in, just participate. It's a little more of the Krog Tunnel. So I thought, what if I took this idea, which I had seen in Ann Arbor, there are fairy doors. And I thought about that. And that didn't start until I was in the band. I kind of saw it on the periphery. I saw people gathering on the street. And I thought, what is that? Oh, those are fairy doors. Okay. 
and I liked that there were people out interacting with them. But I thought, what if in Atlanta, it was just, it wasn't about fairies or gnomes or elves, unless you want it to be, there's no judgment, it's about whatever you want it to be about. <laughs> um, but what if it was just about people? What if it was just about your community? And we just called it Tiny Doors, right? And then you can say who it's for. So the idea was to reflect and respect the community surrounding it. So this is the first door. It was installed in July of 2014. And it kind of looks like the Krog Tunnel. I tried. It's uh, got a little cement around it. My friend Sarah drove the car, and I mixed with a chopstick cement the whole time. I have way better strategies now, but that was the first one. Um, and you see the hashtag there? It just says hashtag Tiny Doors ATL. And the idea behind that wasn't, I'm going to start an Instagram. It was, here's a hashtag. If you want to show people what you're doing, go ahead. You know, use the hashtag, and maybe people will interact with it. So that was the original thought. And um, I thought maybe people would paint it over or kick it in. I didn't know what was going to happen. But I thought for sure the thing that always happens, which is something gets painted over, is what would happen. Nothing happened. You guys, nothing happened at all. It was they put it in in July, August, September, October. Um, and round about October, I was walking by. Oh, this is, this is another slide about that. This is me introducing it on Instagram. Yeah, OK. We believe you. So <laughs> I walked by the door, and I saw this. And I was like, OK. <laughs> OK, Atlanta. Um, so we're not painting it over. We're not kicking it in. We're leaving cats. Got it. <laughs> so I, um, and I promise I didn't do any of these things. I found it. And every day, I go past here. So every day, I watched as the cats slowly disappeared, like one by one. Um, I was like, all right, well, somebody, at least one person, is paying attention. All right, that's good enough for me. That's something. And then there was a box of flying biscuit biscuits. <laughs> And again, I mean, like, this is, now I'm curious. <laughs> like, what's happening? And one day, I was driving to work, because I had to have a job, you know how it is. Uh, driving to work, and I saw this little white thing in front of the door, and I turned around, parked my car, got out, walked up. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a tiny Atlanta Journal Constitution <laughs> about the tiny door. Okay. So, so now I'm curious. Now it's this two-way curiosity, right? People, somebody, at least one person, is curious about the tiny door. And I'm curious as to how I can keep fostering whatever is happening here. How can I keep this interest going? So I started asking the question, what makes a neighborhood curious? And a little known fact, um, most of the doors that are up right now are at the request of the neighborhood. So people might think that I walk around Atlanta going, oh, that's a super good spot for a tiny door. I do have that thought, but I resist the urge. <laughs> I have found that the doors fare better when the neighborhood wants them there. You know, there are people in Grant Park who walk around with toothbrushes and clean off the doors because they asked for the doors. So I'll show you a little bit of Grant Park and of and how I've tried to respond, how I've tried to keep a neighborhood curious. So Grant Park applied. Does anybody live in Grant Park? Yeah. Um, so Grant Park applied for some tiny doors, and I put out a little blast. I said, OK, dear Grant Park, please send me photos of the door that represents your neighborhood. Just show me what you think represents who you are. Every single door had a window in it. I was like, oh. <laughs> I don't know how to make windows, you guys. Um, I grew a little bit that day. So this is, you know, these are some, a sampling of doors in Grant Park. They all have this clapboard around on their houses. They all have these windows. They all have transoms. It's like, all right, well, I'm going to have to figure some things out. And I stood in front of the city, and the city said, you can't put it on anything historic, but you can have this tree. <laughs> I said, OK. And they said, no nails. It's like, OK, so that tree and I are really good friends now. Um, 
So I set about working on installing a door in this tree that represented Grant Park. Because if the doors represented me, I would just make them all pink and sparkly, and it would be great, and it would just be pink and sparkly doors ATL. Um, but, but instead, I work really hard to represent neighborhoods. So I used a tiny toast box that seemed appropriate um, and made a template to fit this door perfectly in the tree. So what I do after I make a template is I make it out of wood. So I use different types of wood. This is um, 112 scale, which is one inch to one foot, if you're measuring, um, clapboard. So this is what I do with this piece is I take it to a mold maker. She pours silicone over it, stay with me. Then we pour resin in it. And what you see on, on the street in Atlanta isn't actually wood because that would warp and fall apart and make everybody sad, especially me. Um, and so what you see is actually a resin replica of wood pieces that I create. So blank canvas had this white door and what colors to paint it. So I bring this thing and try to match it. What I ended up doing was matching the door to the moss on the tree and matching the orange to the highlights and the Georgia red clay. <laughs> Stop it. So a little known fact, and a child pointed this out to me. He said, did you notice that that looks like the state of Georgia? Right? I'm like, sure. No. <laughs> No way. So um, this is the door in Grant Park. This door, the other day I was there, I, I, every time it rains I have to scrub it off. And I, the door doesn't close. I'm like, who vandalized this door? Why doesn't it close? The tree grew, y'all. <laughs> I really need to slow down. Um, so that's the view. It's one, of the, it's one of the highest points in the city of Atlanta. And from there, I just, I like the juxtaposition. So what happens? So I put in the tiny door. Then what? Then how do I know it's working? How do I know people care? What's a good way to gauge that? I do a little ribbon cutting, but generally, I don't gauge the success of a door on how many people can make it out on a rainy Saturday morning. It's about how it keeps speaking to you. So I watch the Instagram. I have a huge advantage there that I can follow the hashtag. So I'll just show you a little bit of what I see when I check the Instagram. Do you see those Lego guys? I was pulling toothpicks out of the ground for weeks. I love this. <laughs> okay, so caption contest. If you can come up with a good one, let me know. I want to repost this one. So once it's there, so once I see if it's working, if people are posting about it, then the challenge becomes maintaining the connection, maintaining the connection to the, from the neighborhood to the doors, and then maintaining the doors themselves. So as of last week, I've painted over door number six 99 times. I'm sincerely hoping there's a prize for the hundredth time that I paint that over. I don't know what it is, but um, so this door chips a lot. There are 20,000 people on the Beltline on the weekend. It gets direct sun, and I enjoy it. But it's almost three years old, and it's been painted over 99 times. So there's a cool advantage that I have found to sitting on the Beltline for hours every week. This is what, this is what lunchtime looks like for me. <laughs> sitting there repainting, digging up plants. But I get to hear what people say about my project as I'm working. So I'll be sitting on the belt line doing my thing and people walk by and I don't know if they know I can hear them. <laughs> but I can hear them. And what they, I think that I started hearing years ago that I still hear is, oh yeah, those are the tiny doors. They're everywhere. They're all over Atlanta. You guys, there are 13. <laughs> Your kitchen table takes up more square footage than my entire art project. And so I, uh, I first would go, no, there aren't. They're not everywhere. There are however many, seven or eight. And, but then I had to sit back and think, well, if everybody's saying that. If I'm hearing that four times in a couple of hours, then I'm the one who's, who's missing something, right? And what I was missing is that it's a feeling that they're talking about. It's not a fact. 
It's not a fact that they're everywhere, but if you see one every single day, it feels like it's everywhere. You know what I mean? So it, I started to have a little more respect for that feeling, and it gave me this really cool permission to slow down. Okay, so if they take up this, as much space as a kitchen table, and you feel like it's everywhere, then I can go slowly and deliberately, and it doesn't have to be everywhere to matter. And that was something that really struck me. And so, yeah, sometimes there are only two new doors in a year, but I still spend 10 hours a week taking care of old doors because they matter to me, because they matter to the neighborhood. Okay, so instead of going through one through 13 of all the doors that are up right now, we're just gonna go through a fine selection of Instagram posts from the 13,000 655 that were up when I made the slides two days ago. <laughs> so at door number one, I have um, guest artists paint over, Cat Lana's here, um, I had, and Squishy Puss, people who come and paint over the door, because to stay in the spirit of the Krog Tunnel, it felt to me like it should be repainted, it shouldn't stay the same all the time, because the Krog Tunnel doesn't stay the same all the time. I love when people Photoshop themselves in. <laughs> like, I like to picture people sitting at their computer just Photoshopping a tiny door. <laughs> this is a dog named Skittles, I've been told. <laughs> Who did that? I love that. This is uh, Karis Books. This is in Little Five Points. This is me and Kat Lana painting a door. This is door number one. Isn't that sweet? Um, there was a stop motion animation film made with the doors as a set, and this is a slide from that. A squishy puss piece. Love that. Okay, all right, you're gonna ask afterwards, so I'm gonna tell you right now. What's behind the tiny doors? So one day, I was working on door number two, which is this rainbow door. And in my memory, it was about 50 angry five-year-olds. But I think it was, it was probably fewer. Um, they walked up to me, and they said, why doesn't the door open? I was like, oh, no. <laughs> and I said, OK, OK, close your eyes. So they closed their eyes. And I said, imagine what's behind the door and they were really quiet. And I said, now you tell me, if you open this door right now, what's better than that? What can I show you that's better than what you're imagining? And some young five-year-old that I love to this day said, nothing. <laughs> and I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> and that's as much as I'm gonna answer that question. Did you see that's Brienne of Tar? Yeah. We'll do a few more of these, just for fun. I love this one. Uh, tiny One Direction posters. <laughs> okay, so I took these for a souvenir. I'm framing them. I love them. This is the library um, with donors' names. This is door number four. Uh, that's, that's actually a little known fact. Door number three has a cat sticking out of it and not a dog. People ask me how I know. It's because I have the front half. <laughs> I love this wagon with the, with the bottle caps. An Arland guest mural on door number one. <laughs> Tiny Michonne. Yeah, I mean, you gotta. <laughs> like this guy. So, um, the Center for Puppetry Arts door. If you look at the door, if you squint, it kind of looks like a puppet. And that was the idea, was to get to the point of it being a puppetry arts door without writing puppets. Not everybody can read, you know, but if you squint, it's helpful. And it also has, we think, uh, the world's smallest public wheelchair ramp. <laughs> I was trying, it lives outside. Um, one more Photoshop because that's a lot of fun. So dream job. So another thing that I was super curious about, can you actually make tiny art and make a living out of it? 
can you work 80 hours a week? Because then, yeah, probably. Um, so what I do is I make the tiny doors that you see, and I also do installations for places like MailChimp. Thank you, MailChimp. This is a tiny bodega. Some tiny shoes for Mizuno. Tiny newspaper stand. I like this door. Those are actually ping pong balls that I cut in half. And it's lit from the inside. So then, OK. So after making tiny doors for everybody in Atlanta, for make, after making corporate installations, um, whatever people ask for, for being that sort of artist for hire, an artist who wants to make things for everybody else, I started asking myself a really hard question. How am I going to maintain my own curiosity? How am I going to get the gumption to go paint over door number six for the hundredth time? How am I going to get the gumption to go scrub pee off the door in little five points again? <laughs> How do I maintain that curiosity? What's going to keep me going? And I thought, OK, I need to start looking at what I really want to do. And as a queer woman, it felt right to me to start doing something that spoke to me. And the thing I really wanted to do, the big dream, I was like, since I was a kid, I want to be in a pride parade. I just want to do it. I think I can. I don't know when. I don't know how. But someday I'm going to do it. So this year, I called Atlanta Pride. And I said, hey, do you have room for Tiny Doors ATL in the parade? They said, how much room do you need? I said, not much. <laughs> And they said, OK. I said, by the way, do you have any grants? They said, what do you want to do? I said, I'll tell you later, but I need an engineer. And they said, all right. So we talked about it. We did a little back and forth. And they gave me a spot in the parade. So I made a nine-foot parade banner and a three-foot parade float. And that felt good, y'all. It felt so good. I'll show you a little bit of what that looked like. <laughs> so I have a friend who's an engineer. He goes by ATL TV head. And he helped me 3D print an axle to go underneath here to put a servo motor in to make the door spin around. I mean, what you're looking at is a dream on wheels. This was fun. This was something that'll keep me going for years. Look at this. Look at the looks on people's faces, like what? <laughs> so then I started to worry. And I talked to my friends. And I said, all right, I can do this. But then what's the backlash? What's going to happen? Because we all know you post something just a little bit gay, and they're all over you. <laughs> so I thought, OK. I want to post this. I want to share this. I worked really hard. It's a dream project. I'm going to put this on my Instagram, and everybody's going to hate it. And this felt even better. It was really, it made me feel this love from Atlanta. Um, and it, made, it kept me going. It reminds me every day that that curiosity, if it's true, if it's really speaking to you, this is something you're looking at an honest project that I really just wanted, that I've felt that love, that I've felt the embrace, and I'll always, always, always be grateful for that. Thank you.